Are you awake? Wake up. Keep awake. Does this sound familiar to you? It's cold outside, and you're snuggled down in the warm blankets. You're toasty, warm, comfortable, and sleeping real good. Then your alarm goes off. You groan and say, oh, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go. I'm too comfortable. You roll over and you crawl out. You hit the snooze. You get back in and snuggle back down. You ignore the alarm and hope it'll go away. You just get all cozy again. The snooze goes off again. You grope for the alarm and you shut the snooze off. Reluctantly, you crawl out again from your warm cocoon. Your feet hit the cold floor and the chill jars you awake. Well, sort of awake. Half awake. You get up. You get a cup of coffee to jumpstart you, and you get ready for the day. You go about your work, and you find it's hard to keep awake. You realize that there are some days you're just not fully awake and able to take on the challenges of the day. You go through the motions, unaware of the activity around you. wait a minute, this thought just came to me. Am I awake? Awake to God's activity around me? Do I keep awake so I see the needs of others? Am I too comfortable to reach out and show God's love to others? Too comfortable to get up and take action? Am I awake so I see the needs of others? Awake and ready so I know what to give and where to help. Am I prepared and ready for the coming of Christ? On the first Sunday of Advent, the lantern is lit to remind us to keep awake and be ready ready to go where God is leading us. Are you ready to go? Wake up. Keep awake. Be ready. Please join me while we read responsively. Get ready for the Messiah. We've been waiting a long time already. Get ready for the Messiah. Get ready for the Messiah. Maybe we can sleep here a little while. Keep awake. You don't know exactly when Jesus will be here. We you want to be ready, ready when Jesus, Jesus arrives. Please join me with the invocation in unison on the screen. God of our lives, we are grateful for the stars which guide us along the way of Advent. As we journey toward the stable of Bethlehem, may your glory dawn upon us as we draw near to your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us be awake to your activity in our lives and in the world. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Matthew 25, verses 1 to 10. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. As I noted last week, uh, Advent is the beginning of the Christian year. Uh, This is the time, it's the four Sundays immediately prior to Christmas, where we focus on preparing for the coming of Christ. I don't know about you, at the McFadden house, the New Year's Eve preparations last night were pretty lame, Uh, but it is great to come here to Creekside in the morning uh, to see how our space has been transformed from harvest to Advent. Our theme for the four Sundays of Advent is ready. This theme sums up in a single word what December feels like for many of us planning and preparation and getting ready for Christmas. Actually, at this point of the season, it's probably better summed up as, in two words, as not ready. (laughs) But for this year of the lectionary cycle, our gospel texts are from the book of Matthew. And Matthew is all about warning the Jewish people to get ready. But, of course, it isn't Christmas that they're being told to get ready for. Our text this morning is from Matthew 25, and it's a parable that Jesus told his disciples and his listeners to encourage them to be ready. Now, it would not have made any sense for him to tell them to get ready for his birth. He was right there with them. So what was he telling them to get ready for? the coming of the kingdom of God. And this is a little trickier to explain. It's less tangible than the birth of a baby, although the two are so tied together that they are inseparable. That's why Jesus teaches about the kingdom in not one, not two, but a series of three parables in Matthew 25. We're focusing on the first one, about the bridesmaids and the lamps, but this is followed by a parable about a master who entrusts his money to his servants while he goes on a long trip. And then the third parable is this sort of crazy scene at the end of time when people are separated like sheep and goats, depending on how they treated their neighbors and people in need. These are all stories which illustrate how we get ready for the coming of the kingdom of God. And none of them have anything to do with presents or decorations or food. What the parable of the bridesmaids and their lamps is suggesting is that there is something we need before we even start to get ready. The bridesmaids are waiting to greet a newly married couple, not just the bridegroom, but the bridegroom and his new wife, to take them into the wedding banquet. But either that service went really long, or the couple took a long time taking photographs afterwards, because they're late. They're really late. It's almost midnight until they arrive. And those waiting to be part of the the wedding party are running out of oil to keep their lamps lit. Five of them have brought extra. And the ones who don't have enough ask those five, hey, can we borrow some of your oil? And they say, nope. You have to go out to the oil dealer and get your own. And so they go out to the dealer, and while they're gone, The bridegroom comes, they all go into the wedding banquet, and those five are shut out. And Jesus clarifies at the end of the parable what it is that we need to be sure we have to prepare for the kingdom of God. And it is not oil. That's just a metaphor. What we need is awareness. 
Jesus says, keep awake, therefore, because you do not know the day or the hour. And even being awake is a metaphor from changing from one state of consciousness to another. So most of us negotiate going from being asleep to being awake, to going back from being awake to being asleep at least twice a day. This might happen more often if you've just had a big turkey dinner and are sitting in front of the TV watching football. If you're under the age of three, you might put up a fuss before taking a nap or going to sleep in the evening. But for most of us, it's a pretty routine part of the day. This is not the kind of a sleep that Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is suggesting is another kind of awareness, a level of awareness which can maintain the tension between what is now and what will be in the future. Now, if we are like those wise bridesmaids, we're planning for the future all the time. We're saving money for retirement. We're getting health insurance and auto insurance in case something happens with our health or happens to our car. We take medicine, change our diet so that we can stay healthy or avoid a heart attack or high blood pressure. In order to manage the tension between now and then, we have to hold an awareness of both of those things and make decisions based on both the present and the future. Like, if I spend all of my money on Christmas presents right now, what happens if the brakes go out on the car and I can't get to work? Now, that's not the illustration that Jesus used, but he used one that would have made sense to his first century listeners. The five bridesmaids, some who took just what they needed just for the moment, and some who were aware enough to plan ahead and be ready when the bride and the bridegroom arrived. There are all kinds of illustrations of how a difference in perception changes our circumstances. The difference between being lost and being found is not about where we actually are. It is about being where we want to be and getting to where we need to be. And the gap between those things is the difference between whether we are lost or found. Do we know how to get to where we want to be or not? I believe that meaningful preparation for the coming of the kingdom of God or anything else begins with a clear-eyed assessment of where we are. Clearly, there's work to be done. If we believe that it's God's will for people to know Jesus Christ and to follow him, to have economic opportunity, to be loved and valued, and for all people to be treated with justice and respect as children of God, well, we have a ways to go. If we decide to stay inside our pretty church and not be aware of the needs around us, then we are, in effect, saying we'd rather just sleep. We won't even try to get ready for the bridegroom. Let him welcome himself and fix his own meal. Only if we are brave enough and aware enough to face the world as it is now will we be able to prepare for what we hope and pray it will be someday. The bridesmaids couldn't make the bridegroom get there. They didn't know what hour or even what day he was going to arrive. But the wise ones took enough oil to be ready and stayed awake so that their light would be burning to light the way. They knew what they needed to do now in order to be ready for what might happen. 
Any vision that we have for the future must include an awareness of the challenges and the resources that we have now and a goal for where we want to be then and a plan for how to get there. Ron Nicodemus wrote a great piece about vision in our December connection. In order to make any vision a reality, we have to figure out how much oil we need and where we're going to get it. Through the next four weeks of Advent, I'm going to be talking about moving from one state to another. Being asleep to being awake is just one example. And perhaps the most profound change is, one, is the one which is most closely associated with Christmas and the birth of Jesus. So I want to leave you with this as reflection in the coming week. It's the change from not being pregnant to being pregnant. Anyone who has given birth to another human being knows what I'm talking about, but even if you have not had the privilege of doing that, I hope you can relate to giving birth to an idea or a project or a vision. There's a starting point and usually some discomfort, maybe even nausea, as our awareness changes to encompass this new thing. There's anticipation and maybe some dread about what the future might look like and how my life might change. There's lots and lots of hope and dreaming and planning for what we need and what could happen and what we have to do to make it go as well as it possibly can. There are times when we're overwhelmed by the enormity of what we're doing and we have to go on faith that it will all work out because we are in God's hands. We aren't in control of this process, but we're still called to do whatever we can to get ready. And that, sisters and brothers, is the work of Advent. We are a people waiting for the coming of Jesus. Of course, we're preparing for Christmas and the celebration of his birth in Bethlehem, but we're also called to prepare for the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of Christ, Messiah and King. Jesus told his disciples to keep awake. We are those disciples who are still called today. We are called to see the world the way it is now, to imagine the world that God wants in the future, and to make plans for what we can do to get from here to there. We don't make God's kingdom come. Only God can do that. But we must keep our lamps burning, our oil filled, our batteries charged, so that we can light the way. God bless you as we walk together in the present and prepare for God's future. We're getting ready for something new to be born in us. Amen.